All right, in this video, I'm going to finish up 4.3. So again, we'll be in section 4.3, logarithmic functions. I want to review some things we've already covered and some things that we covered last semester, and then we'll go into some more examples and then get into section 4.4. Uh, first thing that we talked about on Monday was how to go from logarithmic to exponential. So recall, there's some things to, that you need to memorize, but if I have like y equals log b of x, that can be turned into b of y equals x, and then vice versa. If I have it in this form, I can rewrite it in this form. Um, a couple other things that are kind of common sense, but just so you know, if I have something like this where b of a b raised to the x equals b raised to the y. This does imply that x must equal y. So if I have the same base, that means the exponents will be equal. Will have to be equal. Uh, a couple other things we've talked about. Uh, if I have something like this, y equals log of x with no base, this is the same thing as y equals log 10 of x. It does have that imaginary 10 there. Uh, other thing we talked about was if I have y equals natural log of x, it has a natural base of e, but if you wanted to rewrite it, it could be written as y equals log base e of x. So natural log has an imaginary e if you wrote it as a log form. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, and then some properties that we haven't gone over, but just remember them uh, from pre-cal. Uh, if I have a form of log base b of 1, the answer will always equal 0. So no matter what the base is, if this is 1, the answer is always 0. And the reason is, is because if I rewrite it in this form, that's going to be b to the 0 power, and anything to the 0 power equals 1. So that statement would be true. Uh, the other thing you need to know is log base b of b will equal 1. So basically, if the base and whatever this guy is, which is the x, are the same, then the answer is going to be equal to 1. And the reason is, is because you have b uh, to the first power, that will equal b. So that's what we get there. So that part is true. Another thing is if I have log base b of b to the x, the answer will equal x. And again, if we rewrite it, this will be b raised to the x equals b to the x. So therefore, the exponents must be equal as such. So basically, what you can see is these guys will cancel, and you're left with an x. A different way to see that as well is that if you have log, and we'll see examples like this in the next section, I have something like this, I can always bring the exponent to the front. And since I know log base b of b is equal to 1, I end up getting x times 1, which is 1. Or my bad, which is x. Um, and then uh, one other one, if I have b raised to the log base b of x, this will also equal x. So basically, if this and this are the exact same thing, it will equal x. All right, I feel like that was pretty much it. So let's go right into some examples. So we were going into objective three. Which is apply basic properties. of logarithms. So basically we're gonna use what I just explained or reminded y'all to rewrite to be able to solve some of these guys. So in this first example here, if I have log base six of six raised to the seventh, this would equal seven. All right. And again, the reason is, is if this guy 
and this guy is the same, this is my answer. All right, let's look at another example. Let's look at log base D of D. Going back to the properties we wrote down, if this is the same, then the answer is just one. If you imagine, you can also apply this one. There's like an imaginary one as an exponent. All right, let's look at another example. If I have four raised to the log of base four of A minus C, that would equal, let's see. So this base is the same as this base. So when I have that where this is the same as this, then that is my answer. When I come back, since these are the same, that makes this my answer, which in this case would just be A minus C. All right, let's look at another example. If I have natural log of E raised to the X squared plus one, recall that this can be rewritten as log base E of E raised to the x squared plus 1. And as we saw earlier, in all these ones, since this is the same and this is the same, this is my answer. Okay. So basically, anytime you have a natural log of E, they will pretty much cancel. And then you'll be left with that as your answer. But this is the, the mathematical proof. All right, so that's basically what you do, applying those basic properties to get an answer. In objective four, we're going to graph logarithmic functions and so our first example here is y equals log base 5 of x. So one thing we need to note is a log base b of x formula. If b is greater than 1, we will get a function like this. It will be some type of growth. If we get log base b of x, and if b is less than 1, and we'll get a function like this, where it's a decay. All right. So in this example, I see that 5 is greater than 1, so it's going to be a logarithmic growth. So I'll just get a function like this. And that's it. On your homework, you might have to just plug in some random points, like 1, 2, 3, and 4 however many points it tells you to do it, to be able to plot some points that you can just hit the thing and it'll graph it for you. All righty, let's look at a more complicated one. In this example, we have y equals log base two of x minus two minus one. So to remind you, if I have log base b of x minus h plus k, the B is still going to tell you if it's a growth or decay, but the H here tells you if it's going to go left or right. So if it's negative, you go right. If it's positive, you go left. Then the same concept here. Positive, you go right. Negative, you go left. So in this case, I see that I will go right two units. So this minus two and down one unit. So I guess to get a little bit more specific in our graphs, there is technically an imaginary vertical asymptote at x equals zero. 
So when I say minus two and I move right to this vertical asymptote, we'll move over two units. to x equals 2. And then technically, our functions always cross at 1. And since 2 is greater than 1, I know it's a growth. So if this is uh, my original 1, and I go over, hold on. Having technical difficulties here. Hold on. There you go.
All right, I apologize for that. All right, so anyway, so we move uh, right two units. Uh, so this point here would actually go over uh, one and then two. So it's now at three, but then we have down one unit. So this point will now go here. So that's one specific point we'll have where it will be uh, three comma negative one. And then from there, you just kind of sketch it like this. And again, because the B is greater than one, I know it's a growth. Now uh, on your... Homework again, you have one specific point, but you might have to go find two more. Simply pick numbers to the right of three and then just see what they give you and then just plot those points. All right. Oh, there is a little bit more to that. I see. Uh, so the domain here for um, logarithms are always going to be from the vertical asymptote over in any direction. So in this case, this would be from two, and it's gonna be a parentheses because it's an asymptote, it doesn't actually equal it all the way to infinity, where range now will be neg infinity to infinity. So you'll see the domain and range flip from what we saw with our exponentials. And then they also want you to be able to write your vertical asymptote, which is this right here. All right. All right, so in this example, uh, we are just asked to write the domain. That's not how we spell right. There we go. The domain. And we are given g of x equals log of 3 minus x. I know there's an easier way before I explain this. So this is this thing to do here before I try to help. Like the first time I did this, it was like, graph it, look at it, see your uh, domain and stuff. Um, but there's a way easier way to do this. Uh, and really and truly, what we can see here, this guy is a lot like um, a square root in a sense that it can't be zero or a negative. Square roots can be negative. But in this case, what we'll do with any type of logarithm, you'll take whatever the inside is and you'll set it greater than or equal to zero. So after that, you just solve it. So I subtract three, and then I'll divide by negative x, but remember to flip the inequality sign when dividing by a negative number. And then there is our inequality domain, but to write this in interval domain, this is x is less than three, so that means we will go from negative infinity all the way up to three, and that would be your domain. So instead of having to graph it, that's all you have to do. Set what's inside greater than zero, and then just solve it. All right, so let's do another example. In this example, we have k of x equal to long 3 of 5x plus 6. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're just going to take the inside, 5x plus 6. We're going to set it greater than 0. So we'll subtract 6, divide by 5. So we see x has to be greater than negative 6 fifths. So again, this would be negative 6 fifths comma, infinity, because it's everything greater than that. And there you go. There's your domain. Let's do just one more. So in this example, we have q of x equals log of x squared plus 10x plus 9. All right. So this is going to be a combination of what we did in the last section. You would take what's inside which in this case is our quadratic. And then you would set it greater than or equal to zero. But remember, when we solve inequalities of quadratics, 
This just gives us our boundary numbers, and then we have to use test numbers to see what is true or false. So in this case, we'll factor this like normal. So a quadratic always factors into two binomials, where the leading term will be x for both. And then all you got to do is figure out what multiplies to 9 but adds to 10. And hopefully you instantly said plus 9 and plus 1 or plus 1 and plus 9 doesn't matter. But that multiplies 9 adds to 10. So then I see that this would be x equals negative 9 and x equals negative 1. But those are just boundary numbers. So then I do my little number line here. This is negative 9 over here, negative 1 over here. Now we can choose some numbers. So something less than negative 10. Let me plug it in. Negative 10 plus 9, it doesn't matter which one you plug it into, but negative 10 plus 9 gives me a negative. Negative 10 plus 1 gives me a negative. Two negatives make a positive, and a positive is greater than 0, so that works. Choose a number between negative 9 and negative 1. Doesn't matter. I'm going to choose negative 2. I see that negative 2 plus 9 would be a positive number. Negative 2 plus 1 would be a negative number. A positive negative would make a negative, and a negative is not greater than 0, so that one is out. Choose something greater than negative 1. 0 is always a good number. 0 plus 9 would be a positive number. 0 plus 1 would be a positive number. Two positives make a positive. So a positive is greater than zero, so that would work. So the domain here would actually be negative infinity to negative nine, but parentheses, because it doesn't have an equal to, union negative one to positive infinity. All righty. Just one more question. And this would be objective five where we have to use logarithmic functions in applications. So this one here says the intensities of earthquakes are measured with seismographs all over the world at different distances from the oof, epic center. Totally forgot the E though. Epic center. Suppose that the intensity of a medium earthquake is originally reported as 10 raised to the 5.4 times the initial um, intensity, and then later, this value is revised as 10 raised to the 5.8 times the intensity. And really, this is this, these are actually end up being super simple questions. So make sure you have this written down. I'll write the questions on the next page. It says determine the magnitude of 
the earthquake using the original estimate for intensity. And the answer here is just going to be whatever the original exponent was, which in this case is 5.4. Then part B says determine the magnitude of the earthquake using the revised estimate for intensity. And it's just gonna be the second exponent, which in this case would just be 5.8. All right, now to figure out how many times more intense was the earthquake? There is an equation, which if given to you on the test, I would definitely provide it. That's one I've never been able to memorize. It does want us to round to one decimal. The equation is going to be the um, It's really just this. It's just going to be 10. It's going to be the revised minus the original. So you end up getting 10 raised to the 0.4. And that, I believe, I don't have a calculator with me, is about 2.5 times. Okay. So all you got to do is take the revised ex exponent minus the original, and you get 0.4, and then you just do 10 raised to that power, and then that's your answer. All right, and that will conclude 4.3. I'll make a video when I get a chance over 4.4 so you have it all, so you can cover it whenever you have a chance. Uh, don't forget, 4.3 is due Thursday. 4.4 will be due Sunday. Hope you're having a good time.